All right, guys, welcome back to yet another week for a, a 10 minute blender build. And uh, this is the 10th episode now. So I've stuck to it for this long. Hopefully I'll be able to last this year out as well, like I planned. I've had a good time so far and uh, I'm celebrating the, let's see now, episode number two, like I mentioned before, the Star Destroyer has done really well. And according to my numbers, it's had about 20,000 views now and 1,500 likes. So I'm thrilled about that. And I'm gonna celebrate that by my making an at at command. <laughs> okay, guys. <laughs> Uh, a bit of trivia here. Uh, I should do some more research before I uh, <laughs> before I say what I'm going to model and things like that. So I thought it was called Atat Command because that's what we used to call it as uh, as a kid. So in this video, you're going to see me saying Atat Command a lot, but I don't think that's what it's called at all. It's a, just a plain walker and uh, Atat Walker, I guess, uh, all terrain walkers, uh, armored. So I'm looking at Wikipedia now. It says Walker. All-terrain walkers uh, are armored fighting vehicles from Star Wars universe. So it's just called a walker short or all-terrain armored transport. So sorry again in this video I'm gonna be saying at at command a lot. Just uh, erase that command uh, and insert walker instead or just uh, at at plain like that. Oh, all right you live and learn. Don't know if you remember that. Remember the first time was that in the second Star Wars movie, which is number episode number five, isn't it? Where you first see the Atat commands. I'm probably totally wrong here. It's been a long time since I watched those films, but I think it was in The Empire Strikes Back or something. Well, I show my uh, lack of knowledge now. Anyway, whichever episode it was, I'm super excited now. I'm going to try to make a, an Atat command, those four-legged wobbly things, totally unrealistic and probably useless in combat. I don't know who came up with those, but they look awesome and I'm going to make one now for this episode. Thanks to everyone who's been slaughtering me in the comments for the lack of use of loop select. I've uh, finally started to nail it now, so Alt key and clicking on the edge between faces will loop select, so I'm definitely going to keep that in mind now. I'm not going to do that error again. So thanks a lot for everyone who's put stuff in the comments. It's really encouraging. I've had a lot of positive stuff coming through and a lot of uh, well wishes. People are really happy about this series and I'm super excited to continue it. So I'm just going to have to find some time to also make some Unity stuff as well. Been a hectic few weeks now. As I mentioned, we're working on a game and it's an RTS game and we're super thrilled about it. We're really excited and I wish I could tell you more about it. And uh, one day I will be and I'll be able to show you some of the stuff. We've been working on it for many months now and we're playing the game like crazy. Me and my colleague Christian, we're going... Um, we're playing pretty much every day now, a few, one or two rounds at least, maybe three. And I get super frustrated because I've started to lose lately and uh, he's a little bit more strategic than I am. So I have to ramp up my game now and really do some imprints and I have to crush, crush somehow. Uh, my method of ascending meat walls towards his artillery is no good. So I'm gonna, I'll have to solve it. Anyway, I uh, can't tell you more now, but Stay tuned and subscribe as well, so you can, uh, when I finally hit drop the news, I, I hope you uh, you can take part in that one, and uh, we'll look forward to launching that game one day. <clears throat> Another exciting news now, a lot of comments about uh, showing the keystrokes, even though I say it all the time. This time I'm going to actually enable screencast keys. When I looked at it a while back, I couldn't get it to work uh, with, the with the version of Blender. I tried it now and it works straight out of the box, so I'm happy with that. Check out to the left, I'll have so all the keystrokes and mouse commands in orange as I go through with things. So you should be able to key, I'll still mention it as much as I can anyway. You'll have it through audio and on the screen. Exciting stuff. Not only did I get a lot of uh, recommendations and, and thanks in the comments, that was uh, great to hear, but I also got a beauty tip and someone thought I should uh, dye my hair and shave a little bit more often. Not gonna do that, I'm not so good with beauty tips. So you're gonna have to put up with it just the way it is. And uh, if I'm lucky, I might shave uh, I do that every now and then, maybe once a week. But thanks anyway. Um, yeah, maybe I should uh, uh, hire a stylist or something one day when I hit. I hit 10,000 subscribers today, and I'm gonna release a little dedicated video about that because that was. Uh, I had to wait 30 minutes from 9,995 to 10,000, but I finally got to celebrate it, and I'll put a little video on that one as well. And my uh, two of my kids, my two girls, were here to just capture the moment as well. So that was a lot of fun. Finally, before I get started, uh, I'm gonna do like I said the Atat command today from Star Wars, and uh, so the four-legged creature. I'm gonna try to model it within the 10 minutes and get a little pose going on it as well. And uh, also. So what should I say? Oh yeah, I won't have to texture map this one because I'm just going to make it plain gray. So that's going to be simple. I'm, I will uh, Google some reference images as well after I'm finished the model. Uh, I looked at a few before I started. Like I searched for some Atat pictures so I could see what geometry is like. And then I also had some quick, quick tests uh, concepts in Blender as well. 
Uh, but this one, it's going to be the straight 10 minutes, uh, no edits or anything like that. So what I produce now in 10 minutes real time, that's what uh, the result will be. So, all right, let's uh, switch over now and uh, come with me here into uh, Blender. And what I'll do is uh, I'll delete the light and I'll delete the camera. And for the glory of the default cube, uh, I believe uh, it's uh, basically uh, common practice to delete this poor thing. So I'm going to keep it in this time. I'm going to keep the cube. Uh, I'm going to send it a big tribute. This uh, Let's see if this uh, video can explode in views. That would be really good. I'm going to promote this, uh, the default cube in Blender. We're going to save it. So I'm actually going to start with this cube and I'm, it's going to probably be the body of the Atat command. That's going to be a, a, a real, real uh, treat for it. So keep the cube, save the cube, save the default cube. So I've talked long enough now, probably longer than I ever have before. Let's get started. All right, so uh, before, like I said, this is a brand new Blender build here. Well, it's uh, running 282. So uh, what I'll do is uh, I'll just drop down here, top right here, check out the viewport. And actually, I should make sure Screencast Keys is running. So I have to re-enable it like that to make sure it works. Yep, here we go. And so I'll drop down here in the viewport and let's uh, do what I normally do. I'll put, uh, I'll enable shadow later on. I don't want to have that one disturbing at the moment, but I will enable uh, the cavity both and I'll ramp these up as well so I get some clean edges. It's good when you model, especially when you look in the side view, for example. If I don't enable this view, I've found that if I have quite flat geometry and I look in the orthographic flat side view, then it's quite difficult to see it. But with this cavity, it's uh, really showing those uh, interior edges quite well. So it's not only pretty, it's actually quite useful to model like this as well. So we've got that set up. Uh, I've got screencast keys is running. So thanks for all of those of you who suggested that. I've got my camera recording. Uh, I've got this camera recording. Everything's recording. Everything's go, I think. Uh, all things that the only thing that reminds or the, that remains now is to set my timer. Also, stay to the end of the video where I'll put uh, a, another week's tips out of Blender. So stay to the, watch to the end and see uh, see that tip as well. Don't forget about that one. Keep the tip in mind. All right, let's get started. Oof. All right, got my time. Ooh. Got my timer here. Get ready. All right, I'm quite nervous for this one. Uh, so this is going to celebrate ten episode ten. Nervous, let's make it happen. Go. Okay, tab, control R, loop, cut, select these phases, uh, delete the vertices, I mean. Uh, let's put the mirror, mod mirror modifier on, and then uh, let's see, side view, and let's uh, shift space G and move you up to here, and let's hide you for now with H. I'm gonna do shift A, mesh, and we're gonna create a cylinder. Let's drop it down to 12 faces. I'm gonna move this bottom face up, hold the control key to snap it, and uh, select top view. A for everything, R, hold the control key to snap rotate, side view, S to scale, shift Z, Z. I just want to scale on this axis, and then down a bit, uh, E to extrude, S to scale it, and then let's select with shift selected the, these toe faces here, period, and do individual origins, E to extrude out, and then S to scale them down, S to scale again only on the Z side view, and let's bring them down. Uh, select that face, I to inset, E to extrude, S to scale, I to inset, E to extrude. And then now I'm going to go into edge select, hold the shift control and select these. And then front view, I'll do shift D, uh, rotate 90 and move it up to here. And then now I can extrude this one on the X axis here. And then select the inner faces here and then do E to extrude and then S to scale, shift X. Uh, and then just bring it down like that. And then let's do uh, control R and control R and then extrude these interfaces here to connect into some sort of an arch thing here. So that's it. Shift space, cursed selected, shift A and then add a cube. Scroll out and shrink this one down a lot. And then I'll uh, extrude this one, uh, scale it a bit and scale again on the Y axis. Uh, e to extrude, S to scale it down and S to scale it on the Y axis. Let's do side view here, uh, and then I to inset this one, and then let's create the actual leg here. E to extrude up to about maybe there, and then Control plus, and then Shift D to duplicate this, and then I need to actually cap the bottom face here, so I'll do uh, F to, let's see, Control shift, Control shift, 
F to cut that one. Shift space, let's create the cursor to select it and let's add a cylinder here again, R to rotate on the Y90. Scale this one down and we're gonna make it about that size, scale X as well. And then now we're gonna be uh, one and then K for knife tool and let's create this. Looks like a screw head a little bit. So let's do uh, these seven and a half minutes gone. And K here again to connect these as well. Get a bit of texture here. So I'll select these faces and then I to inset these and E to extrude them in a little bit. Okay. This one we're gonna bring down to here. E to extrude, S to scale, thicken it a bit. E to extrude again, side view, up a little bit more. And then L to select this one. Shift D to do, oh, only this one. Shift D to duplicate it. And then let's scale this one up a little bit more as well. Okay, uh, let's move this leg into place. A to select everything, G and about there. Let's bring the belly back, so Alt-H to show the hidden here, side view, tab, and let's make you a little bit thinner like this, A to select everything, move you down to there, and let's move you a little bit more narrower as well. Okay, here, side view, E to extrude, S to scale, G, how am I doing for time, 613, scale. Uh, e to extrude, S to scale down, and then do the back here, side view, E to extrude, S to scale, G, E to extrude, S to scale, G. Okay, and here, uh, I for inset and B to link it to the center here. Bring it down, side view again, E to extrude, E to extrude, S to scale, G, E to extrude, S to scale, G, E to extrude, S to scale. Smaller, there. Okay, and then let's select these faces, uh, actually, uh, and then move them in. I think it's a bit cone shaped like this. Okay, and let's do loop cuts here and let's do eight of them. And uh, I'm gonna select uh, Alt key to do the loop select this time. I to inset, S to scale it down. Okay, and let's make a cannon here. So I to inset here, E to extrude, I to inset, E to extrude again. And then let's do I to inset, side view here. E to extrude, E to extrude S, E to extrude again, and then here, let's do I and then B to get individual, E to extrude twice, scale it down, and then here, side view, E to extrude, uh, G to move it down to here, maybe E to extrude, S to scale, and E to extrude. Okay, I'm not happy with those cannons, but that'll be okay for now. Um, here, I to inset B, E to extrude, S to scale, E to extrude, S to scale, and then let's Select these faces, Control shift e, uh, i to inset, and then bring them down. And then let's bring these down even further, like this. And this edge here as well, maybe. And then same here, let's do to there, i to inset, bring that one down. And then let's deselect a few of those, bring that down. And select that one, bring it up, okay. And then now we need to, uh, let's do Control. Actually, let's see, it's four minutes. So I need to fix the legs now. So I'll go into side view here and then let's do shift right, oops, right click there, uh, shift A and add, uh, out of edit mode, shift A to add an armature tab. And let's move you down to here and let's see viewport display in front, E to extrude and then E to extrude again. And then this bone we wanna call, uh, upper leg, I want caps, upper leg. This one is the lower, lower leg, and then foot. And then uh, I need to select this one now and shift select this one, control P to parent with empty groups. And then let's select the top here, L to select the link. And then let's assign this one out to the upper leg. And then that one we need to assign as well to the upper leg. Uh, this one, L to linked and L to link and then assign this to the lower leg and then here we want to select this one and this one and assign this one to the foot tab uh, let's select these uh, shift D to duplicate shift space G let's move a back leg there and then let's shift select these front view shift D move that one to there and then now I've got two minutes 49 to go so control tab pose mode and then actually 
before I do that, let's move everything down a little bit to there. Let's get some leg movements here. So control tab, rotate. So these are linked now. Rotate, 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 and rotate. And then this leg maybe control tab, control tab, rotate, rotate, and rotate, rotate, rotation. Ah! I should have inverse kinematic here to get this proper, but never mind. Control tab, control tab again. This leg, let's just move it like this. This may be the one that's moving at the moment. Uh, control tab, and let's select this one. I've got two minutes to go. Control tab, rotate, rotate, rotate it up a bit, and rotate it down a bit. Okay. And. Rotate, rotate, and rotate. Okay, this one's in the floor still, so let's do control tab, rotate. This one might be the one that's moving then, but let's keep it like this anyway. Okay, and here I can, uh, let's see, I've got one minute 20 to go, control tab. Let's get some texture going here as well. So tab, let's move this one in. And let's move this one in as well a bit. And uh, this one we can move up a bit. Maybe like this. And uh, let's do some texture here. So I'll do Control R. And then like this. Shift select. Oh, shift select a few of these. Let's do I for inset. E to extrude that one in a bit. Then we can hide the armature once we don't need them anymore. And uh, maybe we can, we've got 44 seconds, so we can actually fix this hideous cannon here. Delete. Delete. Oh, delete faces. 30 seconds. E to extrude, R to rotate, S to scale. Let's make these straight this time. E to extrude, S to scale. Let's see, 15 seconds, R to rotate, E to extrude, S to scale, E to, e to extrude, G. Six seconds, E to extrude, scale, E to extrude. Okay. <sighs> Finished. I have uh, no idea if the proportions are right. I'm probably missing a few items, but I managed to rig it and do some uh, basic leg movements and some cannons as well. Missed the face there a little bit. Should have had that. So, but I'm okay with it. So let's uh, do a comparison now to, uh, let's bring up a browser here. And here is, uh, here are a few images. Some of these are toys, I guess. But let's bring up, uh, maybe that's a toy. I guess everything's toys, isn't it? I should get from the film, shouldn't I? Uh, Star Wars movie. Oh, the cannons are a little bit smaller. Different shape here on the body, maybe. But the legs are sort of uh, similar. Uh, I've got the arch there going around and the lower base, the screw head type of uh, joints here. This looks a bit different from what I did. I didn't have time to put all the geometry there. I've got some more low poly look, I guess, and thicker, uh, thicker cannons and things like that. But in general, I've got, I think the, let's see if I can get that view the same as that one. Maybe something like that, yeah. And let's put sh shadow on as well, actually. Let's see. Here, and then do, let's bring some shadow in here as well. Yeah, that's it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this one. It was fun making this one. It's quite stressful, but I managed to get uh, both the geometry in place and uh, some simple armature and uh, get the legs movements there. But I missed uh, having some inverse kinematics so you can just plant the feet down and just uh, drop the body down a little bit. But uh, it's quite crazy what you have to think about when, uh, when the body has to calculate just to bring your hand from here to here. Uh, like your shoulder, your elbow and your all your joints sort of know how to work it out. But if you're going to rotate everything in individual, it's uh, not as easy as it seems. You have to, your mind solves these things quite quickly.
quite rapidly, I think. Still, it was a lot of fun to build this one. I had a great time and I hope you enjoyed watching it as well. So the tip for this week is going to be uh, that you can duplicate vertices and edges. So if you remember for the foot here, what I'll do is actually I'll bring Shift D to duplicate this leg here. And then I'll do uh, P to separate it into a new selection. And then let's tab out of that one and tab into this one. So what I did here is, uh, if you remember for the leg to create this arch here, uh, there's other ways to create arches, but I found this one to be quite fast. Um, so if I go to number two here, edge select or click up here, same thing. And then I selected this edge here and then I pressed control shift and I selected all the way to here and then another face as well. I didn't go all the way around because it flips out if you do a full full half circle. But if you nearly do the full range with the control shift, you'll like uh, select all the way to there. And then what I did was I went into front view here and then I pressed shift D to duplicate these edges alone. And then I right clicked and I moved them up like this. And now uh, I'm still in the same mesh here, but these are a different set of linked vertices and edges. So what I can do now is I, uh, what I did was pressed R to rotate Y 90 to flip them around like this, 90 degrees around. So I'm still in the same mesh, but I've duplicated these edges and I've flipped them around 90 degrees. So I'll go into front view again, and then I press G to move them. And then I hit E to extrude. And then it flips like this, so I right clicked and I select this edge, uh, sorry, this axis to, to force them on the X axis. So now I've created some additional geometry here to create an arch. And then what I did was uh, I selected uh, three, which is the same as going up here to face select. And then I selected here, press control shift to here. And then I, I can extrude this now. So I extruded it, but I didn't really want it to go straight down like this. So I right clicked to snap it back, but it's still duplicate here. And then I press S to scale it and then shift X to scale it, not on the X axis. And then I moved it down. There might be some even faster ways to do this. But I find I do quite often that I can like, let's say you wanted to just uh, extrude this face here or separate it. So again, you can just shift D to duplicate this face, place it wherever you want and then E to extrude it. And then you've got a separate bit of geometry. And these are really good because these are all, if you press L over the geometry here, it remembers that these are linked to each other. So the original geometry here was linked. Uh, and then if I double click A to deselect, I can press L to select this one and double click A to deselect and then L to select this one. So anything that you separate from your main mesh, you can still access by the linked vertices to that self. So that's why it was quite fast to make the foot uh, and these detached objects, even though it's not a separate bunch of objects in the hierarchy here, it's really good uh, you know, to, to be able to use the L for the linked uh, vertices like this. But uh, this object we can delete. We don't need that one anymore. But overall, I'm happy with the results and I uh, hope you are too. I hope you enjoyed this video. Plenty more builds to do and uh, keep the suggestions coming. Maybe next week I'll do that gun that people are asking me a lot for and I've got plenty of more Star Wars requests and all sorts of things. So let's keep the, keep the stuff coming and uh, hope you enjoyed this one. I certainly did uh, have a lot of fun making it. So hit the thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe if you haven't already and uh, join me on my journey to 100,000 subscribers. I'm going to get that silver play button one day. Hopefully this year I'm going to make it happen. Until next time, have a great week. I'll see you then.